What's up, everybody? It's the Alex Leak and Friends NFL Podcast back for another week. It's the 2018 off season, week five. I got David Stoyo with me in Canada. Hey. And I got Gavin Heslop in Oregon. Hello. Uh, back for another week to talk all the free agency, all the moves going on in the league. Um, let's start off with um, the Seahawks wide receiver Doug Baldwin. Uh, talking about Kirk Cousins says, quote, Kirk Cousins is a hero for all the young players that will follow after him. Now we need more players to bet on themselves until fully guaranteed contracts become the norm. Um, in my opinion, I think this is a big moment for the Players Union. We've had NBA and MLB uh, fully guaranteed contracts for a while, and I think that the NFL, it's about time they get caught up. Uh, in my opinion, it's the most violent sport. Um, Stoyo, do you think that uh, with Kirk Cousins getting this fully guaranteed deal, that more will follow? Maybe a couple more for QBs, but I don't think that your everyday NFL player will receive a guaranteed contract just yet. They should, but I just don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, it's going to have to start with the quarterbacks and eventually leak its way down. Um, Gavin, do you think that that could be more the norm going forward? Yeah, I think it's going to be for quarterbacks and for really high, um, high talent players. Um, it's so essentially the people that are in a really high demand. So any any quarterback that's worth starting is going to have a high demand. You know, be really valuable in the market. You know, if a if a top end wide receiver or running back is cut for whatever reason, you know, they'll uh, potentially have that opportunity as well. But I don't think it's going to be the thing for all. Uh, you know, all future free agent signings uh, for for a while now, um, and I think um, I think if for the teams, at least for the organizations that are signing them, it's definitely better. Um, you know, you see in the NBA where so often players are traded solely because they don't want to pay them that contract anymore, and people have value because their contract is over at the end of a year, and suddenly these free agent you know uh, cap space opens up. So. Um, while it's definitely better for the players because they know what kind of money they're bringing in, uh, it definitely can be detrimental to the organizations. Um, if the player doesn't pan out, um, they could be stuck with a pretty disastrous contract. So I'd be all for smaller contracts uh, for shorter terms uh-huh. um, for, with all guaranteed money. But you know, these um, like I don't want to have Stafford's deal be fully guaranteed by any means. I don't mind paying him all the money if he's still around, but to you know, be stuck with 125 million dollars over six years. Um, if he breaks his leg or something, you know, and can't come back for two seasons, our you know the Lions are, you know, gonna be crippled just like him. So <laughs> yeah, uh, Stoyo, how important do you think uh, fully guaranteed contracts are going forward to the CBA? The players have been fighting an uphill battle for years trying to get better deals, better leverage, do you think that this can be an important moment, important direction for the players' union? I don't think it's going to be, to be honest. Yeah. There are just too many players out there, and somehow the NFL owners have managed to not fully guarantee the contract yet, and I don't think they're going to change that anytime soon. Yeah, we'll see. The players are certainly uh, trying to back Kirk Cousins and trying to get it to be a uh, bigger deal. Um, speaking of the Seahawks, they also uh, make some moves in free agency. They sign linebacker Barkevius Mingo to a two-year deal worth ten million dollars, and they sign tight end Ed Dixon to a three-year, fourteen million dollar deal, as well as wide receiver Jerron Brown. Uh, Gavin, do you think these are good moves for Seattle that's trying to replace a lot of talent leaving uh, town? Um, I, I like the Barcavius Mingo signing, a former first-round draft pick, top-10 pick, uh, that never has really panned out. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely some talent there. Um, maybe he lacked motivation. I believe he was drafted by the Browns um, mm-hmm. coming out of LSU, so maybe he wasn't used to playing for an organization that you know didn't win many games. So now he'll uh, be motivated in a, a team with a winning culture around him. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the Ed Dixon signing. Three years, $14 million. Uh, he's never been an extremely productive tight end, uh, so that's a little bit confusing to me. Um, but maybe they, 
maybe they see something that someone else doesn't. But to me, that's a little bit uh, a little bit pricey for him. Yeah, I agree. Um, the reason they got rid of Jimmy Graham was, first of all, his contract, but he didn't really fit the system, being much more of a pass catcher than a run blocker. And Ed Dixon kind of fits the same role, a decent pass catcher, but not a great run blocker. Um, Stoya, what do you think of these moves for Seattle? I don't think they became better over the past week. Yeah. They're just a couple of pieces, but nothing that you can write home about. Yeah, I felt like they had their eyes on some bigger name players, but it just didn't work out for whatever reason. Um, one of those players being Austin Safarian Jenkins that they had in for a meeting, as well as Ndamukong Sue. Um, Safarian Jenkins signed a two-year deal worth 10 mil for the Jaguars. The Jaguars also keep Marquise Lee on a four-year deal worth 38 mil, 18 of it guaranteed. Um, they signed corner DJ Hayden to a three-year deal worth up to 21 mil. And they release wide receiver Alan Hearns and 13-year veteran tight end Mercedes Lewis. Gavin, uh, the Jaguars seem to be getting rid of a lot of their pass-receiving weapons. They hang on to Marquise Lee. What do you think about the Jaguars' moves here? Um, definitely like the um, the signing of uh, Austin Severi and Jenkins, really talented tight end out of Washington. They just wasn't ever to, um, able to... Uh, stay in the league and to be able to be a consistent addition to his team. But he definitely saw some moments of brilliance when he did play, um, even with the Jets. Uh, they saw him be uh, relatively productive there, especially given their offensive situation. Um, so it, I think that was a good sign. He was a good amount to two years, $10 million, I believe. Yep. Um, the Alan Hearns uh, release is uh, I kind of expected. He didn't really match – so well with Blake Bortles over this last season, um, and he had some injuries, so I can understand why they would let him go, especially if um, they had to sign Marquise Lee, who uh, did match better with, with Bortles, and they're paying him a lot of money, so you got to keep him. Yep. Um, DJ Hayden, though, that's, uh, I'm not sure, he he didn't really, hasn't really played that well over his career, um, so... $19 million over three years to me is is steep for someone that um, might be your third or fourth corner. But, um, you know, they're, I guess they're, they're signed Blake Bortles to $19 million a year, so. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, interesting moves. We both know, you know, we all know about DJ Hayden playing for the Bears and the Lions, and they've got two established corners there in Jacksonville, so that's a decent amount of money to give a third or fourth string corner. Uh, Stoya, what do you think of the Jaguars moving on from Mercedes Lewis? He's a Jacksonville lifer and now finds himself uh, no longer there in the free agency market. Yeah, I think Jacksonville has made some questionable moves. Yeah. I would try to resign uh, Robinson for sure, but maybe they were afraid of his uh, injury. Also, they figured that they have to pay that defense, and they're trying to resign everyone in the next few years. But I don't like the fact that you give Bortles a contract and then you get rid of his best weapons. Yeah, exactly. If they're trying to take something from the Bears playbook, let me tell you, it does not work. You <laughs> have to surround your QB with weapons. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and, I mean, I know it's early, but I think Jacksonville is going in the wrong direction here. I think they're going to have more pressure on them next year uh, after making it to the AFC Championship game. And I think that they're losing some weapons on offense. And uh, I would have moved on from Bortles, but they obviously did not. I'm actually going to predict that the Jaguars don't win their division next year. Um. I completely agree. They had a really easy road this year that uh, often I think is overlooked. You had Andrew Luck not playing, so there's two easy wins right there. Yeah. Um, and I, Sean Watson was also hurt, and J.J. Watt was hurt for the Texans. You had um, to the two quarterbacks and the best player you know, on the defensive side of the ball facing Bortles um, not playing at all last year, essentially. So uh, I think that's, uh, that's something that is going to – uh, kind of be shocking to 
Jacksonville fans or people expecting Jacksonville to just run away with the division again. Yeah, should be a much tougher division. Um, a quick note on Mercedes Lewis. He was the only uh, Jaguar left from their 2007 playoff run, the last time they had made the playoffs. Nice. Yeah, Lewis has been there forever. That's kind of a crazy move. I guess he's getting up there in age, but... Um, the 49ers signed running back Jarek McKinnon to a four-year deal worth 30 mil. Um, to me, I think that's a great fit in the Shanahan system. I think that he'll be used a lot uh, there in San Francisco. They also add a center, Weston Richburg. Uh, they signed him to a five-year deal worth 47.5 mil, 16.5 guaranteed. And they traded their center. Daniel Kilgore to the Dolphins and swapped late round picks. Stoyo, you think Jarek McKinnon is a good fit in San Francisco? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Feels like the 49ers have been doing a lot of good moves recently. And yeah. I'm a huge fan of uh, what the GM over there has done. Yeah. Big shout out to John Lynch. And uh, they had to replace Carlos Hyde. Gavin, you think that. Uh, you think that that's a good fit? Yeah, I think the, um, the pass catching abilities of Jeremy McKinnon will definitely uh, suit uh, Garoppolo well, give him a good check down option if he needs it. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do in the draft. They try to sign someone uh, for first and second down, though. Um, McKinnon, over the last couple years, has regressed uh, in the running game, and especially this last year when you had uh, Case Keenum playing so well, you've I struggle to understand why he would um, not play, not, not even be able to average four yards of carry. So, um, so I, I, I'm wondering if they'll do something else. But yeah, they definitely needed to add some talent after losing Hyde to the Browns. Yeah. Yep. Um, another team in the division, the LA Rams, uh, getting rid of wide receiver Sammy Watkins and their corner Tremaine Johnson. Uh, Getting rid of both their contracts earns them two third-round compensatory draft picks. So some good moves there. Uh, L.A. is hanging on to wide receiver Tavon Austin on a restructured contract. And they are signing offensive lineman John Sullivan to a two-year $50 million deal and re-signing defensive tackle Dominic Easley on a one-year deal. Stoyo, you think it's smart moves for L.A. moving on from Sammy Watkins and Tremaine Johnson? Yeah, especially if uh, Sammy Watkins' price tag was 16 mil a year. Yeah. He had under 600 yards last season. So to me, you cannot warrant having to pay someone that much. Yeah, and I think they'll be able to move that money around and get some better, better fits for Jared Goff. What do you think of these moves, Gavin? Yeah, um, I definitely like... You know, letting go of, of Watkins. So you wonder if if he, he'd be able to spend more time there had he been able to mesh with Goff a bit more. But um, you know, maybe they could probably feel like they get something cheaper with Robert Woods there um, and someone that already has that chemistry in another year. You know, with the with the quarterback. So yeah, um, definitely. I think you know, moving on from Tremaine Johnson and it's not like they have still have to fill those gaps they had signed to keep to leave and. Um, Peters. Marcus Peters. So yeah. uh, this, I don't feel like they dropped off in talent by any means. And uh, Dominique Easley uh, does a great sign in one year, not even $2 million for that one year. So it's a good prove-it contract for a guy that's struggled to stay healthy. Yeah, great point. Um, Rams should be contending in the division once again. Um, the Eagles re-signed linebacker Nigel Bradham to a five-year $40 million deal to keep a good good uh, volume tackler on the defense and keep them going in the right direction. Um, the Giants signed left tackle Nate Solder from New England, four-year, $62 million, uh, with 35 mil guaranteed, making him the highest-paid left tackle. And uh, head coach Pat Shermer says Eric Flowers, who was our left tackle last year, who had a difficult season, will compete for the starting right tackle position. So the Giants go out and definitely solidify the left tackle with Nate Solder. Do you like this move, Stoyle? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Uh, how do you guarantee someone $35 million when there were 
questioning if they're going to retire or not. Yeah, that's a lot. So to me, that's a lot for someone who has been beat up for quite some time and wanting to quit the game. So hopefully it works out for them, but it's a little bit aggressive. Yeah, I agree. I think they definitely wanted to get the left tackle position better for Eli Manning, but 35 mil guaranteed, I agree with you, Stoyo, is a lot. What do you think, Gavin? Yeah, it's a lot of money, but um, the, we saw the struggles with uh, the line last year and how Eli Manning struggled and, you know, and how the entire team struggled. So if you can get him some better pass protection, if they feel like he's still got a few years left in the tank, uh, you've got to do what you can to... Uh, to protect the guys. So when you lose out on Andrew Norwell, you got to go for the next best thing and uh, you sign the best uh, free agent tackle you can. And um, if, uh, if Coughlin were there, I would say it was just his way of getting back at Tom Brady or just another way, but um, <laughs> it's not there this time. But just the Giants taking away something from Brady that he loves. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um the Panthers are re-signing 38-year-old defensive end Julius Peppers to a one-year deal. Uh, he's coming off a productive year in 2017 with 11 sacks. Surprising to see Peppers keep on making big impact in the NFL. Um, Carolina also signs defensive tackle Don Terry Poe to a three-year deal worth 27 mil. And they give Cam Newton uh, another we- weapon at wide receiver Jarius Wright. A two-year deal worth uh, up to three and a half mil. Stoyo, do you like bringing back Peppers and uh, signing Don Terry Poe for that defense? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of Peppers, except for a few years when he was somewhere up north. <laughs> but besides that, yeah, he is, seems to not age, and somehow he's still productive. Who would have thought that? Yeah. I think he's going for the all-time your sack record and Paul is a great addition as well yeah some good weapons Gavin do you think these are uh, upgrades or good moves for Carolina yeah I'm keeping Peppers there who I know he you know played for a couple crappy teams other than uh, Carolina but it's <laughs> always good to see him back there um, and you know he's he's a panther in my mind you know they selected him first overall and yeah um, they second. made smart second uh, I could be wrong. <laughs> Anyways, sure. well, he was a he was a high draft pick. Either way, Let's say a very that. high draft pick, absolutely. Um, and it, they they played really smart with him this last this last season. Uh, only played about half the snaps. Didn't require him to you know get after the quarterback every single play, and uh, he was able to be productive. So um, definitely a great signing for him. The Poe signing um, is also a good one. Um, a little skeptical though on Poe. Uh, he showed some lethargy when he was in Kansas City, um, and Atlanta signed him to a one-year deal this offseason. He played well, so it'll be interesting to see if um, if signing a longer-term deal. But only three years, uh, it's not going to cripple the Panthers if he ends up uh, slacking off again. But um, if he can play up to that, um, up to his potential, and you've got a strong locker room, especially with Peppers there still. So yeah. I definitely think it could pan out. Um, I'm a little skeptical, but I... Um, definitely think it's a good signing yeah i think about that line and you think peppers you think k1 short now you add don terry poe if everything works out that could be a nasty uh front four um the raiders uh making a lot of moves with john gruden uh in his first year there um they especially in the wide receivers they released michael crabtree uh, they instantly replace him with wide receiver Jordy Nelson from Green Bay. They give him a two-year, $15 million deal with 13 guaranteed. Um, they also are uh, have Eric Decker coming in to visit here soon. And uh, they trade away Cordero Patterson to the Patriots for some draft picks. Stoyo, do you like bringing in uh, Jordy Nelson and possibly Eric Decker? Do you think that'll improve the Raiders on offense? No. No. I think that Jordy Nelson is over the hill. He had, like, I believe, 100 yards last season. And to guarantee him $13 million is yeah. a bad signing, in my opinion. Especially when you guarantee, like, 80% of the contract. Yeah. 
What do you think, Gavin? Do you think it's a smart move or a risky move for Oakland? I think this is uh, Oakland signing a Packer receiver that is going to underperform to their standards, just like uh, James Jones did. Yeah. Jones? <laughs> Something Jones. Yeah, James Jones. James and Jones. Javon Walker. Javon Walker, yeah. Uh, Forgot that he went to the Raiders, but yeah, um, I wouldn't mind this signing so much if they had it hadn't come at the cost of Crabtree. Um, the guy and uh, Carr had real good chemistry. I'm pretty sure they had uh, they had probably close to 20 touchdowns in the last two years together. Mm-hmm. And now you've taken uh, someone away that had some good chemistry with your quarterback, your young quarterback, and replaced him with someone that's older and slower. And I can't imagine costs any less than what Crabtree was costing or would need to cost if they re-signed him. So a uh, real, real questionable move in my eyes for for the Raiders. Um, yeah. Some, o- some other moves for Oakland. Um, they brought in Doug Martin we talked about last week. And it sounds like they are keeping Marshawn Lynch. Um, he's still on the team and received his $1 million roster bonus. So all signs are pointing to him being there for the 2018 season. They also bring in some defensive help. The Raiders sign linebacker Tahir Whitehead and corner Rashawn Melvin. They also sign tight end Derek Carrier to a three-year deal from the Redskins, taking him away from brother John Gruden. And they also sign fullback Keith Smith to a two-year $4 million deal and safety Marcus Gilchrist to a one-year deal. Um, Stoyo... Do you like the pieces that Gruden is bringing in in Oakland? Like uh, Tahir Whitehead and Rashawn Melvin especially. Stoya? Gavin? Yeah, let me jump in here. Um, I definitely like the Rashawn Melvin signing. Um, He uh, was definitely the the Colts' best cornerback last year. Um, And... I, I like these one-year deals where they don't get a ton of money, um, and it's you know kind of prove-it deals. So uh, definitely good for the Raiders to upgrade a cornerback, getting Melvin. Um, and as a Lions fan, I definitely know the name of Tahir Whitehead. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really disappointed that he's no longer going to be a Lion. He wasn't um, the, uh, the most amazing linebacker we've had. But he was probably our best line of backer last year, so it's a shame to see him go. Um, I definitely think it's smart of Gruden to try and get some defensive pieces, being an offensive-minded coach, uh, get some veteran presence in there at linebacker. Yeah. Yeah, I think some good moves. Stoy, are you there? Um, Stoyo, what do you think, uh, do you think that Tahir Whitehead and Rashawn Melvin are good additions to the defense in Oakland? Um, I think it's up to the head coach to add players that he likes. Yeah. So, whatever fits his system or his need. Yeah, they definitely have to get better on defense from the year they had last year. Um, the Ravens are releasing wide receiver Jeremy Macklin. Um, they're signing wide receiver John Brown to a one-year $5 million deal. Um, guys, what do you think of this story? The Ravens originally reached an agreement with wide receiver Ryan Grant on a $29 million deal, um, but unfortunately Grant failed his physical related to an ankle injury in 2017, and the deal falls through. Grant's agent, uh, Rocky something, says, quote, if there were a game tomorrow, Ryan would be able to play. And the Raven, Ravens GM, Ozzie Newsom, says, quote, it was a medical decision that I had no control over. Uh, soon after he failed the physical, Baltimore reaches an agreement on a three-year deal with uh, recently released wide receiver Michael Crabtree, worth 21 mil and 11 mil guaranteed, Gavin, what did you think of the Ryan Grant uh, physical debacle there in Baltimore? I think it could have, um, it was the best thing that could have happened to Baltimore. <laughs> um, I think Crabtree is a significantly better receiver than Ryan Grant is. Um, ethics aside, uh, the Ravens definitely got better uh, with Crabtree over Grant. Um, but. It's, it's unfortunate. I'd say it's unfortunate for Grant, but he actually might be go, have gone to a better situation 
uh, now signing with the Colts. Yeah, I would agree with that. Stoyo, do you think that there was any kind of uh, like Baltimore bringing in Ryan Grant and then all of a sudden they see Crabtree's available and they just bail? Do you think it was something like that? Um, do you think that the Ravens are better off with uh, Crabtree instead? The Ravens are definitely better off with Crabtree. Yeah. I will not point the finger saying that the Ravens made him feel purposely that physical, but it helped him out quite a bit, I would say. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, when you want to improve your football team, you have to do everything you can in your power, and when a better receiver gets released, huh, who's to say <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Yo. Um... The next team, the Arizona Cardinals, uh, released safety Teron Matthew after he refused to take a pay cut. Um, the Cardinals then signed tackle Andre Smith for a two-year, $10 million deal and offensive lineman Justin Pugh to a five-year deal worth $45 mil. Um, bringing in offensive linemen to protect their new statue quarterbacks of Sam Bradford and Mike Glennon. Gavin, you think these are good moves uh, shoring up the line in Arizona? Oh, yeah, they definitely need to work on protecting the quarterback. They struggled with that last year um, with whoever was behind center. Yeah. Um, but the Tyron Matthew release um, is really perplexing to me. He's uh, one of the better defensive backs in the league, I think, and it's really interesting to see them release him. And then on top of that, to see him – sign for not a ton of money i think there's something that um that uh gms know that we don't because it's it just it's really confusing to me yeah yeah it's interesting he's one of their young building blocks one of the guys you think they'd build around him and patrick peterson and they decide to go a different direction um stoyo what do you think of the cardinals moves here do you like the uh, bringing in the linemen and do you think they should have kept Teron matthew you definitely have to keep Matthew. Yeah. I don't know how you can cut such a good player. Yeah, there, something has to be there. Maybe there's some story that we don't know about because him getting cut and only signing for $7 million, something doesn't make sense. I would have given him a $12 million a year contract easily, maybe even more. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not... Also, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of what Arizona did this offseason. season. You added two average quarterbacks, and you made your defense weaker. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what they do. Um, they've got David Johnson, but he's coming off an injury, and I would be very tempted to draft a quarterback and start building for the future there. Um, the Browns all-pro left tackle Joe Thomas calls it a career, a long, successful career in the NFL. Um, one of the best left, left tackles to do it. Um, on top of that, Cleveland trades corner Jason McCourty to the Patriots in exchange for late-round draft picks. So now the McCourty brothers are both in New England. Um, the Browns sign tackle Chris Hubbard to a five-year deal worth 37.5 mil, 18 mil guaranteed. And the Browns also bring in running back Carlos Hyde and tight end Darren Fells. Um... Browns coach Hugh Jackson backs newly acquired quarterback Tyrod Taylor, saying, quote, he's going to be star the starting quarterback. There is no competition. Um, Gavin, what do you think of the Browns' moves? Um, do you think bringing in Hyde and Fells and these guys are good additions? And what do you make of Hugh Jackson uh, taking quite a stance uh, with uh, Tyrod Taylor so early? Um, I think that that's his stance with Taylor. I think that's what you have to say at this point. Yeah. Um, they you don't want to um, to to show your hand so early before the draft. You want people, um, even if everyone knows you're taking a quarterback with one of the first four picks, um, you have to have people think that there's a potential that you might not. So you need to leave some. Um, you know, you, you can't be telling. You know, you can't show your hand. Yeah. And so you need to pretend like. You know everything is you know is normal. There's nothing going on. Um, you can't hint one way or the other. 
Um, so I, I like the signing of Hyde. He's definitely had some injury issues, but he's also a really talented player. Um, and this, I don't think, takes them out of the Saquon Barkley sweeps, sweepstakes. Uh-huh. Um, but it definitely gives them uh, a very viable option if they decide not to go with him with the first or fourth picks. Yeah. Um, you had uh, Darren Fells in Detroit last year, and he seemed to be a decent option for Stafford. You think he's a good fit in Cleveland? Uh, yeah, a good, <laughs> good, good fit to be a Cleveland Brown. <laughs> Absolutely. I kind of liked. I kind of like Darren Fells. He he's serviceable. He, he is, but he's not a bad player. But he's more a blocking tight end than a receiving tight end at this point. Yeah. Uh, and if, if assuming that they're going to draft a young quarterback, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you have a a good receiving tight end on your roster. Um, I don't remember if Mini Gronk is still on the team or not. Uh, Gary Barnage, um, but he was he didn't play last year pretty much at all, if I can remember. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and I also know that Tyrod Taylor he thrived with a with a good receiving tight end uh, in Clay there in Buffalo. So whether you have your rookie starting or you've got Tyrod Taylor starting, to me you need an upgrade at tight end. Yeah. Yeah, I think that could be a good pick. I also like the Chris Hubbard uh, signing, um, especially if you're going to lose a guy like Joe Thomas. Um, Stoyo, what do you make of uh, the Browns moves? Um, with, uh, addressing the line, addressing running back and tight end. Think these are good moves for the Browns? These are good moves. Uh, I am disappointed that... Uh their left tackle decided to retire. Yeah. I think he should have stuck around at least one more season. You don't want to end your career going 0-16. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with uh, Taylor, at least, they should be able to get one victory next season. I am going to predict that. At least one victory. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you <laughs> set the bar really high. <laughs> you can do it this year. Maybe even two. Yep. Yeah, I definitely like what uh, Dorsey has done since joining the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, and, good good call on Dorsey. Yeah, and he has now just a lot of picks in the draft that he could really change that franchise around. Yep. And I definitely think that he's going to draft a QB. Last year, he was on the Chiefs, and he drafted Patrick Mahomes. Okay. When he had Alex Smith, so... I don't think he's going to be worried about having, what's his name? Saquon. Uh, yeah, Taylor. So, in my opinion, the Browns are going to pick a running back first and they're going to draft a QB at four. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, we'll that's s- what they should do, at least. Yeah, we'll see how all that goes. Um, the Patriots bring in defensive end Adrian Claiborne, who had nine and a half sacks in 2017. Um, and they sign him to a two-year deal with 12 and a half mil, and they also bring in running back Jeremy Hill from the Bengals and re-sign safety Patrick Chung to a short-term extension. Gavin, do you like the Patriots bringing in Claiborne and Jeremy Hill? Uh, absolutely. Uh, Claiborne has definitely been a, a productive pass rusher, and that's something that the Patriots really struggled with uh, this last offseason. Uh, this last season, I mean. Yeah. And so they uh, addressed that need there. Um, and they also didn't sign him for a ton of money. Two years, $12 million isn't a huge investment. And I really like the Jeremy Hill signing. Um, he was he rushed for over 1,000 yards um, in his first season. And um, he definitely struggled a little bit. But he was also splitting uh, time with, um, with Giovanni Bernard. And then they drafted uh, someone this this last season, Mixon. took carries away from him. Joe Mixon, that's the guy. Yep. Uh, so I definitely think that it's a good signing. Uh, the Patriots have been able to revitalize a uh, running back with character concerns who's, um, whose career was kind of on the downslope and with Garrett Blount twice. So I think that they can do it again with Jeremy Hill, and they got him super cheap at only $1.5 million. Yeah, I'm with you. I think that's an underrated get. Um, I like Jeremy Hill going back to LSU. Thought he was going to be a little bit more of an impact in the NFL, but like you said, he was kind of buried in Cincinnati. 
And New England has a way of finding these hidden gems, so I hope he has a breakout year. Uh, Stoyo, do you like the Jeremy Hill and Claiborne additions in New England? I do, even though Claiborne's stats were a bit padded. Yeah. He had six sacks in one game. Yep. So that really uh, added his stats. And yeah, New England always finds a way to get good players at a good rate. And this is why they keep competing constantly. Yep. I think they were able to... uh, Replace Dion Lewis with yeah. that signing of Jeremy Hill. So that's exactly what the Patriots needed. Yeah, and we'll see what they're going to do in the line after losing a guy like Solder. We'll see. Uh, but, yeah, some good, a good start to free agency for New England. The Buffalo Bills signed defensive end Trent Murphy to a three-year deal worth 21 mil. And I was waiting to see where this guy ended up. Quarterback A.J. McCarron uh, is signed to the Bills and most likely will be their bridge quarterback for whoever they draft. Um, the Bills uh, right now seem to be calling everyone, trying to trade up to get in the top five. They're very aggressive, trying to get the quarterback of the future. Um, some good news is running back Travaris Cadet, who fractured his leg and dislocated his ankle, against the Patriots, has made a full recovery and is returning to the team this offseason. So that's some good news. Um, Gavin, what do you make of A.J. McCarron being the new guy there in Buffalo? Uh, I really like the signing. I think he's going to be uh, a, a good bridge quarterback for the Bills. I'm, um, I'm really bewildered how he only signed for $5 million a year. Yeah. Uh, that's really perplexing to me um i've i stated in a previous podcast that i wasn't a huge fan of him as being a long-term starter but um the way that quarterbacks have been getting paid um to only get five million a year is really surprising to me so a great get by the bills yeah and i agree with you that is surprising and um i think that McCarron is going to eventually get his, but it's taken longer than it should. And uh, I think that he'll get an opportunity one of these days. A bridge quarterback is a decent position, but Buffalo seems to be kind of uh, going quickly into a rebuild. Do you like this move, Stoyo? Do you think A.J. McCarron can be a good bridge quarterback for the Bills? Absolutely. I'm a huge fan of this move, especially at that rate. Yeah. It just proves that you don't have to overpay your uh, bridge QB. You can just give him a few mil, and he usually will take it. You're saying that Mike Glenn's deal was a little too high? Uh, I am saying that. I've been <laughs> doing that for a few years. <laughs> but what do I know? <laughs> well, uh, I'm happy that AJ is finally going to have a shot to start. Yeah. He's never really had that in his career so far. I kind of liked him in college. I definitely was a fan of his significant other. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, maybe he can get something done in the Buffalo. Yep. Yeah, we'll have to see. Um, it's going to be up to him to get the Bills into the playoffs for a second year in a row. Um, the Saints signed linebacker Demario Davis to a three-year $24 million deal and signed quarterback Tom Savage to be Drew Brees' backup. Um, also the Saints owner, Tom Benson passes away at the age of 90. So rest in peace to him. Um, good job bringing New Orleans a championship. Um, Gavin, you like the DeMario Davis, Tom Savage signings? Yeah, I like the Savage one. Um, he's not getting paid a whole lot and he's, he could be a decent backup in the events that, um, that Breeze goes down, but everyone in New Orleans is praying that that's not what happens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. Decent backup, and hopefully that's all he needs to be. Stoyo, what do you make of the Broncos sending quarterback Trevor Simeon to the Vikings in exchange for late-round draft picks? you think Trevor can be a decent backup for uh, Kirk Cousins? Sure. He has... Uh some starting experience under his belt, so that's what you want to have in your backup QB. Yeah. And if you're Minnesota, you do not want to see 
Simeon on the field. Yep. You just paid Kirk Cousin almost John Gruden money. So, <laughs> in three seasons. So, you don't want to have to play your QB. But, as Philly has now shown us, backup QBs are important in a franchise. Uh-huh. And you can do you a lot... Can, you can do a lot worse than Simeon. For sure. Um, Gavin, your Lions are making some moves. They signed corner Deshaun Shedd to a one-year, $3.5 million deal. And they bring in a running back to try and uh, get 1,000 yards for the team this year. They bring in LeGarrette Blunt on a one-year deal worth 4.5 mil. Do you like these two additions?